Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a Django and React login slash authentication system. This is not the first video in the series, in fact we've already done 14 before in which we've covered all topics from sign up to login to password resets. In this final video we're going to make some small tweaks to error messaging so that our users know exactly what is happening and then I'm going to demo the full process that we have gone through in the last few videos. And the reason that we're doing this is to give the user a little bit more insight into what is happening. Because if I want to log in with an email address that is not in my database and also a password that is not in my database and I click on login, we don't actually get any error messaging. And you can also see that inside of our code in the login.jsx file that if an error occurs, we log it in the console, but we don't actually do anything with this message. So what we will be doing is we're going to borrow and implement the message functionality that we did in our password reset video, and we're going to implement that on our login page. So the first thing we're going to do on the login page is import my message from that message, because that is actually where that piece of code lives. Now we need to do a few things and we can go to the password reset page to see how it exactly works. What we need to do is we need to first off have a constant which uh, tells our application whether it needs to show the message or it does not need to show the message. Then in our return statement, we also need to put in a statement that if show message is true, then we are going to show a message for the user. And if it is not true, then we don't show anything like we see right here. Next, we also need in our submission statement to actually put in the logic where we change the show message to true, which will make sure that it becomes temporarily visible for the user. So let's now do that inside of our login.jsx file by starting off with copying over this constant for show message and set show message. And we're going to bring that into our login.jsx file. And we're going to put that right here on the top. Now, the next thing that we need to customize is our return statement, because in here we evaluate whether show message is actually true. And based on that, we're going to be showing the message. So I'm going to copy over this statement right here, and we're going to bring that into our login page as well. And we're going to put that just above the form tag, because we saw in our previous video that the form tag is going to do some funny things with the formatting. Now we are currently on our login page. So if an error occurs right here, we can state something like login has failed. Please try again or reset your password. Okay, and with that component now being present, the only thing that we need to do when we actually catch the error is we need to set this show message equal to true. So we can copy over the set show message, and if we encounter an error, we're going to set show message to true, like this. And that should make sure that this message becomes visible once we log in with a combination of email and password that does not exist. So let's see what happens. And we actually encounter an error right here. So let's go to inspect and see what is happening. And we have not defined use state in our login page. So we need to go back to password reset and we're going to copy over this react use state import because we also need that in our login.jsx page. So I'm just going to put that on the second line right there. And now we should be able to use use state uh, like we did for password resets. And you can see right now that our login page is visible again. So if we now again try with an email address that does not exist and a password that does not exist, we should get an error message on the top right here. And we indeed saw an error message for a brief second, uh, but then it disappeared again uh, because we were redirected again to the login page. Uh, so let's find out why that happens and then try again. Okay, so after a little bit of troubleshooting, I found why that happens. Uh, in our Axios instance, so the thing that makes our API call, we have an interceptor right here. And that evaluates that if there is an error, it is going to remove our token and it's then going to redirect us to the homepage. Uh, however, 
if we log in, I don't actually want to be redirected to the homepage again because then my message goes away. So to solve this, I am going to delete this line of code uh, because we don't want to be redirected to the homepage. And when we remove the token from our local storage, we should be redirected to the homepage anyway because our protected routes are actually going to check if token is there. And if it is not there, it's going to navigate to the homepage. So that line was redundant anyway. So let's try what happens when we log in again with credentials that are not in our database. So we are back and we're going to try again with an email address that is not in our database and also a password that we don't recognize. And if I now click on login, you can see that the error message will stay at the top of the screen. So that is working quite nicely. Now, I also still want to check if the functionality from our interceptor still works correctly. So if we don't have the token in a local storage, we're actually being redirected to the homepage just uh, for security's sake. So I'm going to log in with email at email.com and then testing 321, which should be a valid login. And right now we are in our homepage of our application. Now let's go to inspect and then actually to the application where we can see our local storage. And let's see what happens when we remove this token. So I'm going to do right click and then delete. And now when I go to another page, it brings me to the login page again, because we are not authorized to do anything. So that works like, so that works the way that we expect. And also our login functionality is still okay. Now, uh, the thing that I don't like right here is that our error message is green because green is only meant for success. And in this case, our login has actually failed. So let's make a small change to the way that our messaging works so that we can set the color based on what happens. So we're back in our code and the logic for our message is actually located in message.jsx. And you can see that in there, we have hard-coded the background color to this nice green color. Uh, and we also set the text color to white. Now we can make sure that this message is even more reusable by creating an additional parameter for the color. And you can already see that we have one for establishing the text that needs to be in a message, but we can of course also determine what color the message should be based on the page where we're at. So I'm going to add two parentheses right there and I'm going to say color. And then we can just comment out this part right here and make sure we have a comma. And now we also need to pass the color on the top of the constant right there. And now we can put in an additional field for color. And now we need to do two things. We need to make sure that this color is set in our password reset file so that we actually get the color that we want. And we can then also add the color to our login. So let's copy over this string right here. And let's go to the password reset where at some point right here, we have uh, the message. And in here, we state that the first parameter is the text. And we're going to set the color parameter equal to the value that we had originally, like this. And now this one should end up being green. So let's save it. Now in our login.jsx file, we're going to do exactly the same thing. And we're going to put in the color right here. But we're going to change this value to a little bit more of a red color. So I've just Googled error message color, and this brings up a few results of what we can use. And I actually quite like this one right here. So I'm just going to be using my color picker and let's see what the code is for this one. It is EC5A76. So we're going to copy that over and paste it in right here in our login.jsx file. And now let's go back to our front end and let's see what happens when we try to log in again with some wrong credentials. So here we are again with our login with the email that does not exist. And let's see what happens when we click on login. And when we get to our browser, I actually see that it does not work. So let's see why that is. Ah, and I see that in our SX, we uh, wrapped the color inside of these squarely brackets, but we can actually just do it like this uh, without those. And then when we get back, we actually see the error message in a nice red color. So I think that is working just fine. So now it is all about checking whether the rest of our application is also still good. And I noticed that in our password reset request, we're also showing a message, uh, but we've not defined the color yet. 
So I'm going to go to password reset right here and copy over this color because I also want to use a green color when people make the request for actually uh, requesting their password. So just like this, it should work fine. And another thing that I'm also going to slightly adjust in the password reset one right here is the timing of how long uh, we take before we navigate to the next page. Because in the previous video, I noticed that it was quite quickly. So we're going to put this to six seconds right here. Um, and that should make the experience for the user a little bit better. And I think just like this, our project is actually complete. So let's go through the entire functionality of our application and see if it all works correctly. Now, the first thing that we can check are the protected routes and make sure that we cannot access any of the pages without us having a token. And you can see right now that we don't have a token. And if we go to the slash homepage, you will see that we are being immediately redirected to the login page because we don't have the token and that is going to keep us secure. Now, when a user enters this and they don't have a login right now, they can go to no account yet and they can register. And in here, we can enter our credentials to create a new user. So I'm just going to create one with my email address and I'm going to also create a password testing 321 and then testing 321 and we can make that visible like this and then we can do register but you can see that we have some password validation coming up right here because it must contain at least one special character so in that case we can add a hashtag to it right there uh, to make sure that it's actually being accepted and that the passwords are a little bit more complex so now when we register you will see that we have been redirected to our login page and we can now log in to the application so if I now use my password again, and let's see if that's correct, then we should be able to log in of our application. And you can see that we are in our homepage right now. And based on the headers that we pass into our API request, we can see all of the data that is available right here. If we would now go to inspect and to our application, and then to the token, and we delete this token right here, Nothing will happen immediately, but as soon as we trigger one of the APIs again, or we go to a different URL, we will be logged out immediately. So if I go now to the homepage and I refresh this, the API will refetch the data. It will see that we don't have a token and it will redirect us to another page. So let's see if it happens. And you can now see that we are back at our login page because we don't have any valid credentials. Now we also have functionality for password reset. So if I say that I've forgotten my password, I can go right here and I can put in my email address for which I want to restore my password and request a password reset. And even here you can see that we now have a nice looking message that refers us to our email um, with instructions for resetting the password. And when I check my email, I indeed see that I've now received an email that's going to help us with resetting our password. And we can see that uh, they mentioned me by the email address. And if I click on a button, I'm being redirected to our application to reset the password. So that's exactly what we will be doing. And in here, I can set my password to testing three, two, one hashtag again testing three two one hashtag and let's see if that is all okay and now we can click on reset password and hopefully that should result in a message and us being redirected you can now see that our password reset was successful and that we will be redirected to the login page in a second and indeed we're now back inside of our login screen and that is actually all for today and also for the series. I hope that you guys enjoyed the content that I made during the series. Uh, if there are any other topics you would like me to cover, let me know and I can assess whether that is doable. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.